Hey everybody, this is Dean FM, and today I wanted to do another reaction video to some TikToks, queer TikToks, because it is LGBTQIA every day. Plus, don't forget the plus, and if you forget the plus, we're gonna have an issue. So, today, what I wanted to react to was coming out TikToks by the channel TikTok on YouTube. As always, please make sure to check out my Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, social media, all that stuff, my Facebook fan page and Facebook group, Queer Casual, a safe space for gender expression and allies. So I decided to come out to my parents today. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do it with a cake. I really don't know how they don't know already. Like, look at my car. I'm Anyways, hungry. here's me trying to hype myself up and listen to Girl in Red, but I just ended up making myself cry. Um, yeah. Anyways, don't I think got too myself much. together and um, now I'm on the way to the supermarket again. Um, here I am. And uh, here I am sitting in the car contemplating everything. Um, and yeah, so then I went inside and I found this cake. Oh, you were written on it. Um, well, I'm kind of coming out to my parents tonight oh. as bisexual, so could you write? I like I'll boys. have you write it down. Gotcha. <laughs> That's the trouble. Gay panic. A little bit, a little bit. That's true. I think it's really stupid that he made me write it down because it's really only five words, but. Anyways, it okay. was really nice for the most part, and I asked him to do it in purple. Look at him go. I was really nervous the entire Look time. Go. And then I got these candles. Um, and yeah, Ooh, I'm sorry. I'll post the down. reactions tonight. Don't hate me. Breathe. Breathe out. <sighs> Hi, guys. This is part two of me coming out to my parents with a cake. Come I on. already told my sister and her friend, so that's why they didn't really have a reaction. <laughs> You're taking off with me? The first thing I'm thinking of with this strategy, this seems lovely for the most part, and it already seems like it's gonna not go too poorly, but I think that there's some danger in presenting a cake in terms of your coming out and presenting it to people, because what if they say, like, no, and then you have, like, this cake that's all lonely and shit, and it's, like, sad as fuck, because then you got a cake that can't be ate. It's a waste of cake. Kidding. That's kind of dark. But you know what I mean. Because it seems like she was pretty positive to begin with that it wouldn't be that big of a deal because it, otherwise, why would you buy a whole cake? Like, if you're coming out to, like, parents who you think are incredibly ignorant, I don't think bringing a cake. The cake is not a guarantee. <laughs> Can you read it? <laughs> I like... Boy, can you grow? Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you see... Let's see. Gotta be sure though. Gotta be sure. Hey mom, there's something I want to tell you. Yeah. Mom. What? I'm trans. Okay. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for I'm us? A boy? Okay. a little well, blatant. Well, this with dad when we get home and uh -huh. figure out how to make that happen for you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's so sweet. That seemed a little blatant because it's like, why would you just say basically like, hey, hey dear, what's up? Mom, I'm pregnant. Oh, shit. I am trans. So what does that mean for us? She obviously th thinks of this, as many families do, a situation that they're not a part of and that they are somehow negatively impacted by. So I think that the word us in that situation is very telling. But otherwise, it seemed like a very straightforward conversation. It's like, I'm trans. And what does that mean for us? I'm a boy. Mm-hmm. So what's your name? Especially the part where it's like, what's your name? Like as a parent just asking, like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> My suggestion would be having the conversation face to face is probably the best way to do it, especially if we're talking about a whole new name. And when she said, let's go home and talk to dad, that scared me. I never wanted to hear that. This girl straight and this girl nah, tipsy off that piece of rock, like. Yes, that do rag. Clean, clean. That's a. I want to wear a do rag. This is my beard one day after coming out. This is my beard two days after coming out. This is my beard three days after coming out. This is my beard four days after coming out. I was confused. They're dying it. Okay. I had a twenty twenty announcement. I'm still gay. Still. Mm -mm. Hi guys, 
guys, my name is Rose, and this is how I came out to my parents. Okay, so first I needed my sister to come home from college because I couldn't do this without her help. And there's us having a quick chat with us. Definitely a good idea from what I've heard to have somebody with you in any situation where you are queer or LGBTQIA+, plus anywhere in there, and you feel like you are in a more vulnerable spot, perhaps even physically, verbal, physical, emotional, all that, you know. So it's definitely good to have somebody there to ease that tension. Be with somebody that you know, knows you, and you're incredibly comfortable with. However, it's important to make sure that you speak for yourself, obviously. These are my theories. You know, I'm not a relationship coach. From what I've heard, from the things that I've learned in both therapy and life experience, and watching things and learning things from the internet, I hence give said suggestion. I saw a girl on TikTok that used a cake to come out to their parents, so I decided to do the same thing. And here's their reaction. Wow. What? Rose! Oh, are you serious? Oh my, oh my baby! What the fuck are you doing? But one thing I think is very interesting is that when a parent has a child that is queer or gay, depending on what it is that makes them queer, whether gender thing, sexuality thing, or both, and they're not the same, let's make that clear. It's interesting that these parents who seem to be so liberal and open-minded to the, what their child has just said to them, that they would know probably a little something, something, maybe not. That's so heartbreaking that this person had to hold these feelings in for so long, regardless of how their parents felt and the political views within the household. So it goes to show that there's other factors outside of the house nowadays, societal factors that prevent people from acting right in their houses or oppressing people within their houses, whether it's religion or just macho-ness in society, wherever you at. Very cute, it's very sweet. <laughs> mm. It's okay to cry. I always admire when people have vibrant hair. I think it's so cool. I'm like, how do you keep it so vibrant? It's such a shame that when you have like afro textured hair and hair that dries out easily or is very frizzy, you can't really do these things. Your hair will get damaged just by the bleach. Like you cannot bleach hair without it being damaged in some way, shape or form. And especially to straighten it. So if I wanted to make my hair look like that, it would look like that for an hour and then I would brush it for like a second and I'd be bald. Why do I always cuff my jeans? Oh, um, hey dad, wanna know something we both have in common? We both like puss. Why have I never brought a boy home? Oh, um, because I'm get. nope, cannot do that. You don't bang hey, people dad, home. I always have like a hair tie on my wrist all the time, especially my best friends over. A hair tie on my wrist, <sighs> yeah. I feel hey, that life. Dad, you know how I never ask you for like acrylics? Yeah, I'm get can't say that. <clears throat> oh well, you just did. Hey, dad, you know how um my best friend is always leaving with a purple mark on her neck, and I told you that it was her a burn mark from me curling her hair. Yeah, that's not what. Oh my god. Oh, you need to make up your mind. When I came out to my mom as bisexual, I told her I was dating a girl, and all she said was, "Is she nice?" And I said, "Yep." She said, okay. That matters. When I told her I'm not really into guys anymore, she said, as long as somebody treats you well, that's all that matters. And that is parenting. Yes. <laughs> Damn. They done said it and they said it right. That's true. I don't know. It's obviously not going to be the experience for everybody. I wouldn't put down parents. Like, I wouldn't put down your parents. If your parents had, like, more of a negative reaction and it wasn't so black and white or so blatant. Like, oh, is she nice? You're happy? I'm happy. That's not always the case. It's not always pip pip chibio. Let me go. You know one thing we have in common? No. I enjoy touching ass, no. What if people practice these things in the mirror? No. I guess you could do Honestly, that. Honestly, just look at me and think about what I'm yeah. about to tell you. We gotta act. Don't feel ashamed if you feel like you need to kind of rehearse what you want to do and rehearse what you want to say because definitely don't feel ashamed for acting out, practicing, rehearsing what you want to say. It's very important not to go in there not knowing what the fuck to say. Just going in there, hey, I don't know what you're gonna say. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I feel like I may be wrong, but doing a lot of video editing and stuff, I feel like I can read mouths a little bit. And she just said, 
I know. Girl, just, just, just accept the moment. Y'all should have cut the video there. Hey! Where to know? Yes. These costumes, artists need to recognize that it's okay to get on screen and not just wear like a hoodie. I'm talking to the men, but I'm talking about rappers. Rappers and everybody in the industry, in the pop industry, in the music video industry, whatever that may be, if you're getting viral hits. I wish people, especially like creative R&B rappers, hip hop artists, men and female and in between, that they would make more costumes. I feel like, what is her name? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, York. <laughs> Bjork, her shit's the bomb. I'm like, if she just rapped, I would be in heaven. She sings a little off for me, it's not my key. That's a good example. I love me some costumes that make no sense too. Abstract, Picasso, the fuck? I am genuinely confident that I have the gayest coming out story ever. Mm. And I didn't even plan it. it I gotta do this. Me. First of all, that technique I knew I should have been doing. The face folder and stuff. I've been massaging my face a little bit, massaging like parts that I want to get more blood flowing, so to speak. If that really works, that rolling and like massaging and getting that blood flowing, I'm gonna try that. And conservative. Okay. So I didn't come out to my mom until I was like 21. Mm -hmm. Then like six months later, I came out to my dad. Before I came out to my parents, they knew I was very heavily involved in the drag community here in LA. Okay. So when I was home visiting for Thanksgiving, I made them come to a drag show with me. And I'm like not too incredibly sure what led up to this, but my dad had said something. I genuinely don't remember what it was, but it made me really upset for some reason. So my dad gets up to go to the bathroom and my mom could see that I was clearly upset. So she asks me, what's up? And like my heart is pounding. And as I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say, mm. this queen comes out and she starts performing Born This Way. By hey. Anna. And I shit you not, as soon as the words, I'm gay, leave my mouth, this queen, literally out of nowhere, rips out a pride flag. To this day, born this way, will make me cry. I'm yeah, really I've heard that for some people. Um, I'm about to come out as transgender to my parents. I, I hope that they'll be okay. I don't think that they'll abandon me, um, but I do acknowledge that this is might come as a big shock. Um, I've been trying you might. to drop Easter egg, little hints here and there lately. Um, oh, yeah, that's so a good idea. I mean, I picked up on those, and it's not totally out of the blue, although they did raise me, so they should know. <laughs> um, but. Hang in there. Terrified. Yeah. You guys a priest. Oh, in South Texas. Oh, jeez. I feel you. I feel you. I, not in that situation, but I definitely understand that that would be intimidating. Oh. Please. Pleasing myself. Absolutely. Life. Pleasing other people, and, and this is what I have to do. To do I agree. And, I agree. This is what I'm gonna do. So. I mean, at the end of the day, it is 100% necessary. Coming out is chance to my parents, part three. Anxiety was through the roof. Yes. I'm with you. I physically could not enter the Zoom call. Oh, it's a Zoom call. Okay, well, I feel like at least that's a little safer. Did the stands for almost five minutes before I was able to enter the chat. Yeah. Take deep breaths. Don't even, like, this, for real, this life is so surreal. People treat us so poorly and make us so confused. It's okay to be confused and it's okay to just kind of ride it out. It's okay to not freak out if you're able to. This is probably a very traumatic experience, just this waiting itself. Find a breath and lock down. Come on. Hi. Hey. Here we go. Absolutely. I'm getting chills. And you just need to know that with confidence. Uh, I'm sorry you're been hurting and are hurting. I'm happy that you're 
thinking you're in a better place. The last video I reacted to, it's about a person who comes out to their parents and it's like a Southern situation and it's very negative, very sad. And they're basically kicking him out and like beating on him. And Southern families, I'm sure this is very new to in terms of this era and this generation. <laughs> A lot of people asked me for my coming out story and I made a video about it a while ago, but I post like 12 videos a day, so I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't find it. I probably couldn't find it either. Uh, so I'm just going to tell it again. So I have three older siblings. They all went to the same college. So did a couple of my cousins. So they all decided uh, when one of them graduated to go get matching tattoos with the insignia from the <laughs> college. The thing is, my mother hates tattoos. So uh, my plan was like, okay, when you all show her at dinner, I'm going to come out right then. So that way the tattoo thing will kind of distract from it. We'll both I hear you. I hear you. Heat. Uh, so we're at dinner. We're waiting a little bit. We're like, we're I feel like go. that's a good idea, but I also feel like that can go horribly wrong. Like that could just be double the anger, double the bullshit that they're going to take out on you. Because first of all, you come in with the tattoo. I got this fucking ink on my arm. I'm also gay as fuck. Like, I don't know. One of them and then we'll just all blurt it out. Okay, so she's we're waiting and then she sees the first one goes, what? is that and then immediately will stands up and goes reed got one too hannah got one too they got one too and then i pipe up and i'm like i like women and then they go and courtney paid for it todd knew about it and so it kind of it took about 15 minutes for them to address my thing and that's exactly how i wanted it to go mm. well again these seem like very very open-minded liberal non-judgmental family so that's very good and yeah the tattoos i support tattoos I think tattoos are so cool i love body modification and tattoos and piercings and all that stuff and people got them them like them devil implants in their head i think everything looks cool especially if you're already getting it done like you're done like you got it done let's not hate on people like first of all a lot of those things you cannot reverse along with transgender people like it's too late we stay in and that my dear was reacting to coming out tiktoks and as always, I would like to say, please reach out. Please make sure you get the help that you need. Be safe. Very much so. Analyze whether or not this will be a safe situation for you. That's about it. Bye-bye.